better be. So I don't get any royalties. <laughs> oh, you say you don't get no royalties. <laughs> oh uh, come on, that was uh, funny. No, 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 you're good. No, no, you're good. You're good. I, I don't. I don't get any. Uh, I don't get any. You know. I don't get any money off of the t-shirts or so. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Yo, what's going on? Woo. I got a long day. I got a long day. On both sides of the field. I got a long day with uh with this podcast because everybody, everybody is calling. And they wanna they they want to talk about something. But first thing first, I gotta get the important stuff out the way first. You know what I'm saying? I am your humble host, Lockout Man. What's going on? And welcome back to the Lockout Man podcast show. I thank you guys for being here. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Hit that all button, okay, so that you can get it when I come on. You know what I'm saying? If you want to support your boy, you can always support me. Hook a brother up with some coffee because, you know, this is, this is a job. And YouTube don't pay. I'm just saying. Well, they pay, but they don't pay much. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you can hit me up with the uh, Cash app or the uh, Coffee app. Both of them is in the description below. Thank you, thank you. Dollar sign lockout, man. And today podcast, I have an interview. I have a young lady in the building that been in this industry for over 20 years. Another one, y'all. Another one. Another female. She does. She does both of them. She does buses, and she drives truck. We about to find out which one that she's doing right now. You know what I'm saying? We about to find out which one she's about to do right now. So I like to bring to the show, bus driver D. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show. Welcome to the LOM. I mean, welcome to LOM community. What's going on, J Most? Uh, appreciate you being here, bruh. Um, bus driver D, man. In in the green room, we was chopping it up, and you threw me for a loop, young lady. You was like, I've drive both of them. I drive buses and I drive a truck and I've been in the business for 28 years oh god damn it man so let's start with your story bus <laughs> driver d love to hear how you got started uh in both trucking and uh and busing and a little bit about yourself ah well good afternoon thank you for taking the time to have me on board your show Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. A uh, little bit about myself. Uh, born and raised California girl. You know, grew up with this. This was a, a family thing. My dad was a truck driver for well over 50, 60 years. Uh, he did busing for about eight, eight years during that time frame. This is a career that was an opportunity at the time. So he worked for Greyhound during the 60s. Mm -hmm. So he was uh, did quite a bit. Showed us all how to how to deal with it. I think growing up with it, it kind of taught you a lot about different people and how to work with others. Mm -hmm. I've always kept that in, in the background. That's always been a forefront to help with other people. And um, it's been a good career. Um, all of it seems to work really well, depending on what's the opportunity at the time. Yeah, it started out with, um, with doing busing, if you want to call it that. I started out with my own company at the time, bought a bus was doing a carpool in an area that pretty much didn't have one. And at the same time, I would drive people from door to door, drop them off, and then I would take the bus and park it at my job and go to work. During that time, you all get a kick out of this, I spent 20 years in dentistry. <laughs> so I'd okay. go and work a nine to five, come back, come back, pick everybody up, take them back to the parking ride that I picked them all up at, and then come back home. Did that for years 
Um, okay, let me let me let me let me back. It, it did up. really well. Let me let me back you up there, yeah. there driver. Let me back you up there. So <laughs> in the beginning, you you went and actually brought your bus. So what was it like a a, a school bus, a coach bus, a a a, a, a regular no, city bus? But um, it pretty much it was a old shuttle bus from the car rental agency. They had a double a hydromatic door, allowed people to walk in with their luggage in case you had big bags. They had a big, giant uh, three-tiered rack that you first walked into and put your stuff down, and then you went and sat in an angled seating. I think it sat about uh, 17 people. And it was air ride. It was a Class B type vehicle. And it was just something I purchased from an auction and got that and put it together and kept it up and running pretty much killed me with it was trying to keep enough people aboard keep the expenses keep as i know some of the owner operators out there do the same thing it's it's always the cost uh, outlaying of it to get it to keep going and keeping people on it to keep it paying to keep it on the road it about killed me because it wasn't a diesel the gas motor just ran me into the ground with a gas card okay okay you know, so, so to so, provide the comfort and to provide all that for people you wanted to to be able to bring to your your table to present to people to ride with you over somebody else was the creature comforts they could get. They had onboard lighting. At that time, it was uh, early 90s. So everybody can tell you back in the 90s, there wasn't much for cell phones. Right. It was just starting to come out. They had brought on papers or books to read during the long commute. Mm -hmm. So having the lighting aboard for them to read while we drove was something that most regular van operators that drove a regular shuttle van couldn't offer. Because not each van is set up that way. They're just set for you to get in there, sit down, and wait till you get to the next spot. So I was providing creature comforts. You got a nice ride. You didn't have to be buckled up. You had air conditioning. Um, like buses are morally designed to be creature comforts for passengers than the shuttle van would be. Okay. And like I said, unfortunately, my biggest mistake was buying a gas motor. Well, you, <laughs> at the time, you can only you, you can only get what, what what your money can afford, right? I mean, theoretically. It, it, true. And then at the, at, exactly. And at the time, most of the rental companies that were doing these things out at the airports and using them to service between airport and car rental lots were using a gas rig because they could buy them in a fleet. And for them to buy gas for them, it was easy. As a big company, they get a fleet discount. Okay. Okay. So why you, uh, yeah, why you're shuttering, shuttling, shuttling <laughs> people, people <laughs> that's around, a, that's a word. You, you know, right. I had mm -hmm. to make it a word. That's how I do over here. I make, I make words that just comes <laughs> out at the top of my head. Like, yo, is that a word? I don't know, but I'm going to use it. Um, did you have to get, did you have to have your CDLs for driving that that particular bus because i know uh i know it's different now like you don't have to have your cdls if you don't if if you don't have like more than 16 people in in a vehicle i think i think anything over 16 you <laughs> have to have your class b I know that, that sometimes that rule depends on the state you're in. Mm -hmm. But being a federal motor carrier, I think we all abide by the same ruling. I'm in California with most of the strictest rules that they have. Yeah. Out here, if it's uh, 15 or below, doesn't require, I mean, it's actually, excuse me, 10 and below does not require CDL. 10 and above requires that. If the vehicle, this is where it changes the little, you know, here's your excerpts on the law. If the vehicle has the occupancy to seat more than 10, you automatically need a CDL, mm. period. Okay, okay. Because there's too many people out here. There's too many things that can happen in front of you, and they want somebody behind the wheel of that thing to be able to handle anything that happens in a hot minute, now, which you can. Now, back. I'm driving, and I'm driving basically where, where I'm at is I'm in the Bay Area. So anybody who knows about the Bay Area knows right. that we've got horrendous traffic. Right, right. So back, so back then... Uh, when people try to start their own uh transportation businesses, they was pretty much getting away with not getting their CDLs because they can carry less than ten people and they could still make money off of that. Am I am I 
correct right. to assume if they if they got the right type of vehicle that didn't cost them to run it correct okay but you also have to remember if you're working doing a commuting line like that underneath the state of california was giving people back then a break in liability insurance because you were covered underneath them they were thinking you were helping them pull people off of the commute scene and getting less traffic out there so they kind of gave you a little bit tit for tat if you want to say now you mentioned your father being uh being a greyhound driver back in the back in the day how 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 was it? I, 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 and I'm assuming that being him, that being that he was a driver, of course he gets to get he gets to go everywhere for free. What about the family discount? Did did that? Did you guys ever roll with your with your father? And if so, what was what was the aura of that around that time? Because Greyhound back then was. I I assume was fun. In in regards to Greyhound, I'm going to be dating myself here and putting my age on the line. Mm. When he drove through them, it was before I was born. So I never really got to drive on a bus with the gentleman. Oh, okay. Um, my ass with my father were in a big rig. I was in a cab over with him since I was about four years old. Oh, so okay. he would take us with us to work. Um, because him and my mom both blue collar, old scrape, get down and get it dirty, get the work done. She was a waitress for 60 years. And oh. so she would work night shifts or graveyard. So instead of leaving us home, he'd take my brothers and I with him. Oh. So we all got to see quite a bit. And my brother above me is actually a class A driver as we speak. He's working somewhere up in the Chico area, which is Northern California. Okay. That's and he's so driving awesome. propane, propane operated trucks. So, my sister got to ride with him at Greyhound because you know, she was a young young kid at that time, and she said it was it was it was exciting for her, except for her being scared to death because back then they allowed Greyhound buses to be up on Mount Tamalpais as Highway One, mm-hmm. which they do not allow anymore to this day because the buses are too big. So wow. it was scary for her on that regard, but mm-hmm. the rest of us kind of kind of came up on the truck end of it. All right, so he uh, so of course he migrated from the tr- uh, from Greyhound into a truck, and he he brought you guys. What was that? Uh, was that when you got your love of trucking? Because back then it was it was more of a brotherhood back then, and I'm sure you guys mm-hmm. you know you guys must have seen some exciting uh, some exciting times and heard some exciting stories. And being that, can you remember? Can you remember that far back at four years old? In bits and pieces, yes, because some things are stuck in your memory as being fun. Mm-hmm. Um, riding with my brother, I fell asleep in the sleeper. Uh, my dad was driving for a, a giant chain that operated like gas store, convenience stores, gas stations. Out here, they called them short stops. It'd be like a Circle K. Mm-hmm. Uh, where they offer gasoline plus the convenience side of it. There's some food market places like that still in some neighborhoods out here. And we would always go in and go with him and check out the store and see what he was doing and delivering. And then we'd get to pick something. Even though he had all that stuff on the truck, we knew as kids that we couldn't be back in the back eating it. You know, it's refrigerated. So it's like we would wait and ask him for something out of the store. If he was able to get it, he'd get it, you know. And he'd buy us candies and whatnot. I remember spilling an orange soda all over the sleeper truck's bed. So that's, you know, that kind of sticks. Because, oh, my God, I'm going to get busted, you know. You're worried. But my brother's up front, you know, laughing at me. And, and it, was, it was okay. It was just one of those things that happened. And you wake up and you're like, oh, this is fine. We're driving at midnight. You know, ooh, we never get to be up like this at home. You know. How was how- It kind of shows you what, what the people who do that kind of job have to do. Now you know, you, what kind of work and how hard they work at it. Now you say you was in a cab over. Uh let me hold on, let me uh acknowledge uh this super chat from J Mos. Thank you very much, brother man. I appreciate the uh super chat and the uh cash app, bro. I I really do appreciate you uh being uh supportive of the show, man. Uh welcome into the show, Michael Jackson. We're not sure if that's the Michael Jackson, but you know, uh, welcome to the show, uh, man. So you said you you rode in the cab over. So 
what was driving back then in the cab over was like. I mean, because I'm assuming the 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 bunk the bunk area was like literally behind the seat with 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 no amenities. I mean, well, being that you guys was kids, y'all y'all made your own fun. You know what I'm saying? But wow, right. back then, back then, it's it's no amenities, right? I mean, no power steering, no air no, ride, no, no nothing, nothing like you've got. So you, so you guys, so you guys like felt every bump, every every hump, every you know everything on the uh, on, on on the road. Yeah, you, you pretty much can, those of your listeners and those of your followers who have been in the industry for a while or retired from it are going to realize the term freight shaker. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes they, uh, freight, the lightning, the freight liners were dubbed that because they were notorious for having bad, bad rides, especially in the old school cab hours. It's just like DJ and the Bear TV show mm -hmm. or that other one that I can't remember the name of. It was very bad. Same thing, you know, as a kid, you made fun of it. It wasn't a bad deal. But if somebody having to drive those all the time, they weren't the greatest. Uh, you didn't have any amenities. There was a sleeper back there, and all the sleeper had in it was maybe a couple of spaces to stick your whatnot, your glasses, your wallet, your phone, or whatever you had at the time. Wasn't a phone back then. Right. But um, you just lay down. That's about it. Then mm. get fit, right, climb over the doghouse and get right back into your seat. Yeah, that truck was just made to be hauling. That's all it was doing. That's it. That's it. They yep. didn't believe in comfort. That's what JMO says, a seventy inch bump. Yeah. Yeah, they they didn't they didn't believe in comfort back then, man. <laughs> all right. So what about uh no, no. What, what about the, better? What about the what about the C B? Did you uh did you ever get a chance to play on the C B? Did he did did your father let you, you know, <laughs> go, go breaker one niner and this is the little, you know, little. Oh yeah, we we knew all the we knew all the lingo back then. We knew all the codes, definitely. We had a home base set up at the house. We had a giant base station, so when my dad was out in the road, we could talk to him. We put an antenna about a hundred foot up in a pine tree that we had, okay. so my mom could talk to him from the truck when she was leaving from work. She's strawberry lady by handle. I'm the shadow. My brother is slow drinker. Uh, my dad was hot foot, so. My husband's is Voyager because I met him through the CV as well. Okay, okay. That's... And we still sell that stuff. So if anybody's looking for one, I still got all the CV gear. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> I like how Michael Jackson. I like how Michael Jackson on is here it, says, "I'm the I'm poor, the poor Michael, Michael Jackson." Jackson. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. You no, you're not. The, you're you, full you, of greatness and positivity. You still the man. You, you still the man. Uh, so fast forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so fast forward, you got into dentistry. Um, I, I, it's, it's funny that I, I, it's funny that I just came from the you know I I went to see my dentist just this past couple of uh, days this past Monday as a matter of fact. Not a fan of the dentist, but you know I'm 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 trying to keep <laughs> I'm I'm trying to keep what's left of this grill in my mouth, man. I mean you know I had a you know, my, my grill wasn't, wasn't the best. And I, I had to start back, you know, grinding. What was, uh, what, what was your experience like, you know, being a dentist and other than, other than family, you know, other than your father, you know, migrating you to the truck, what was, how was dentistry was, I mean, for you? And then what was the reason that you got into the truck? Well, dentistry started out in high school, uh, sophomore year. It was a teacher that saw potential, uh, asked me if I was interested. Dentist locally was looking for somebody. I always hated the dentist as a kid. So I you thought it was kind of really that. weird that all of a sudden I'd, 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 I'd flip and give it a chance. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I didn't want to work the three months I had already done at Taco Bell. I realized that was not for me. So I'm like, nah, I'm not going to go there. So gravitated to dentistry, did did my RDA stuff for almost 19, 20 years. Um, on the way to work one day, I got T-boned in my K5 lifted Chevy. And all of a sudden, there's three, four months of uh, recuperation, had to have surgery on my shoulder. And uh, since you work over patients 
flipping heavy instruments and sharp stuff. I just, I just didn't want to go back into it. I figured it's time to hang that up and go into driving professionally. Let me ask you this. Since you put in 20 years, was you able to like, quote unquote, retire from dentistry? You know how they, you know how you retire from the, from, you know, from, uh, from the service. Was you able to like retire? Oh, you mean like with any kind of pension? Yes. No. I, unless there's the bad thing about dentistry. It teaches you a lot about people. It teaches you how to work with people. It's like being an EMT or firefighter or anybody who works in a hospital or any position they may have. It tells you how to be with others. But dentistry is not a position that's going to, unless you're the full on dentist, and unless you work for a, a university or a big corporation school dentist outfit, nobody's going to retire with anything other than just no, time to move on and get another job. I mean, I could have pulled Social Security from that, but I won't be able to until I'm 65. So touch on, touch there's on. The, there's the repetitive years of doing that work. Oh, go ahead. Would you, you could finish? Well, there is nothing. There is nothing from it. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was only one lady I worked with. Are you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Hello. Yeah, there was only one lady that I I worked with that actually um, was able to full retire from that position that's because she worked for the university in san francisco okay. and she worked for the same dentist i did and that's where her pension comes from okay from okay. the school touch on some of the horse regular stories. dental offices though they don't they don't give you anything other than like discounts on your dentistry or not paying for it at all that's about the only thing you get yeah because then i mean you guys whoo where they get these prices from mm. That's what I want to know. I mean, I, I went to, I went to the, I went, you know, the last, well, I, I go like frequently now, but I went maybe about a couple of years ago and, you know, I, I needed a root canal, uh, crowns, all sorts of stuff, like crazy. I got that, I got that, uh, the estimated bill and I was freaking sticker shocked. They want, I mean, it was like 2000 and some change. Like, mm -hmm. like where you guys come up with the prices for, for, for that, man. I, you know, I, I, I couldn't, yeah, it's, it's I, I never, couldn't afford it. I, I just told them to rip the tooth out. Sometimes that's your best bet. I hate to say that because losing a tooth isn't good, but. If it comes down between you being really sick because the tooth abscesses or you removing it at the time because of the cost. And that's the problem with healthcare and system in general. A lot of people won't have the funds for that. Regular uh, truckers on the road, bus people on the road, you know, unless you have health insurance or any kind of dental insurance, you're still looking out of pocket, even from what they cover, an arm and a leg that nobody has to give for that. So, and it doesn't mean that you can have this tooth problem because you were neglectful of yourself. It could be genetics. It could be nutrients from when you were carried in the womb. There's a lot of things that stem to having teeth problems and not just you bringing it on yourself, like somebody using too much ketchup or somebody taking drugs. You know, there's a whole thing that changes that. But, hey, I get you with the price tag. I just paid for my husband's two implants in his, in his head. just cost us out of pocket, uh, out of pocket cost for, for me and him was to cough up on that was about six thousand bucks. Six thousand dollars to be implanted. Whoa. You By the way, the other cost on that that the insurance took care of was like each cost of those each cost of the tooth is per tooth. We're talking about the extraction, then the bone grafting, then putting in the abutment, and then waiting for the healing time, and then coming back and putting the tooth in there overall cost for one tooth all of that i just said is about eight grand a tooth wow. mm, mm, and yeah i'm covered mm. with insurance from where i work at my husband had his coverage unfortunately with both of those coverages we were still out of pocket forty five hundred dollars on just the teeth being put in the head mm. now so, yeah i highly recommend if somebody needed Oh, go ahead. Go if ahead. they needed implants, I would recommend that they don't do it. They try to figure out if a bridge can work with crowns and if they can get a stay plate. Try not to lose a tooth if possible, but 
the other the other means are a far bit more uh, easier on people's pocketbook. And I don't care who you are. If you've got dental coverage or not, it doesn't cover 100 percent. Man, listen, I I uh, uh, my my teeth back then when I was a kid, you know, growing up and then in my 20s, I, I kind of like neglected my 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 grill you know i didn't go to the dentist like i'm supposed to eat a lot of candy and all like that and just you know just messed up my teeth but as i got older you know i was like look man i you know i started seeing some people with like messed up grills like i mean and i was like look my front like my my back teeth you know i could i could i'm good with like loot but my front (laughs) teeth i I don't want to lose my front teeth. So, yeah, I started going to the dentist, started brushing my teeth on a daily. I mean, on a daily. And, yeah, you know, I, I, I got it. I got it under control. Um, genetics. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right about genetics. That's why I don't say nothing about about when I see people with with jacked up teeth, because I'd be like, bruh, why are you not taking care of your teeth? But as you said, you know, genetics. It's like it probably might be hard for them to take care of their teeth. But damn it, man, you're a truck driver. you making some kind of money, bruh. I mean, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I talked to Wise Al. Wise Al's been. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wise Al's been chapping in here. And, and genetics is true. But my husband's problem was not from lack of hygienics, lack of brushing teeth. His problem was his mother. She was uh, over in Germany uh, in, during World War II, during the bombing. wasn't much for her to eat. So taking potatoes out of farmers' lands and stuff and trying to make do, it does push through to the child that's being carried. So a lot of his uh, problems was stem from that. Wow. Yes, I am a candy monster as well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I had to, yeah, <laughs> I had I had to, to watch cut, it myself. I had to cut. I had to cut back bedtime. So yeah, I, I'm 100. I'm 100 now. So 20 years into that, uh, nice. you 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 migrated into you migrated into trucking. How how did you um uh being that you brought your bus previously, did you get your your right. CDL when you got your bus? Or you got your CDL when you got into the truck? I got the CDL when I bought the bus. And but unfortunately, the CDL had to be upgraded another two different times. And that was because that first bus I bought did not give me air brakes. So I had to go back. And when I went into from driving my own bus to working for a charter transportation company where we did over the road type of stuff, take people on tours and be gone for 14 to 18 days I had to have air brakes so there's the whole pre-trip CDL everything again from the California DMV and then boom to go from that I worked for a garbage owner for 12 years during that time I was his private driver for his personal bus but whenever none of his people would show up for their shift I'm in every part of the garbage industry doing every truck that they owned from picking up residential to uh, residents to commercial to back of restaurants to back of grocery stores picking up roll-off containers uh oil containers everything you, you name it i did it okay so that's that transformation to the garbage company that's still class b work but he also owned 18 wheelers so his guy that he had working for him was what signed us off from the dmv he had somebody in his company that could take you take you in a truck and just say okay yeah you're doing everything just right we'll tell the dmv you're good Boom. It's very rare that a company has somebody like that. And it's very rare that DMV will allow it. Now, so they back, have to be pretty good at what they do for DMV to let that guy write off his people to say, yeah, they can drive commotion. Now, back then, uh, back then, getting now getting your license at the first one was mm-hmm. a show, what was called a chauffeur's license at the time, right? No. Okay. No, it was class B, just it was no air brake. Oh, okay. Out here it's class B, no air. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Because when I talked to old school drivers, they they first license was, you know, was a commercial. I mean was yes. the uh was there, the chauffeur. Theirs would be called chauffeur back in the day. Right. Yeah. And then they actually they just grandfathered in to the class A. They didn't have to do much. 
You know, I talked to the one driver. He said all he had to do, mm -hmm. all he did was just brought his license into the bureau and they just changed it over. You, you didn't have to do the eye test like you do now. You didn't have to have a, you know, medical card like you have to have now. But uh, he just walked in and boom. But now you, of course, you can't do that now. <laughs> you can't do that mm, now. No. You it's very rare, that. like I said, that somebody has a company and there's the one person that's the operations of the company for the drivers that allows them to get checked off and not ever have to go through the front door of the DMV to get the license upgrade. I just did it with the guy at the company. All right. So and you was, was driving 18 wheelers for the garbage. So you, so did, wow. I, I'm, I'm sure they just didn't just threw you in there and <laughs> just threw you through the, to the wolves, but, uh, you you no, got in you, you kind of sort of I was also go ahead I, I was actually uh, used as a political tool because I was the only female driver they had to get contracts for different cities oh okay, okay yeah okay okay put in the paper written up about you name it yeah okay. big political tool oh, okay well you, you yeah got, how how was the money back then. How was the what? I'm sorry. How was the money back then? Like how uh, how 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 was how much back then the money was better than what it is now. So, like, what was the average? Yeah, pretty much. What what was the average back then versus now? Well, that's considered. My job was considered a little odd because it wasn't straight up just a garbage driver employee. Mm -hmm. I worked for the, the main family, kind of like working for the mafia. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not kidding. They were Italian. Oh, okay. Um, nice people. But the, um, the, um, the money was pretty good. But because I was their, their private driver, they did really well by all their drivers. But they also kind of did things on the cheap. They would hire people that I don't understand why they would do this. It cost them in the end. I mean, they'd had people come in and give them the keys to the truck and do a route. And the guy backs over a 70-year-old lady in a cul-de-sac and she loses both of her legs. So he ends up flying off to Mexico and nobody can find him. He leaves the company holding the bag. Everything starts to go downhill from there. Wow. Needless to say, the company that I work for is now owned and operated by a national company called Recology. They kind of bought out everybody. All right. All right. Cost That's... of living was a little cheaper, but I don't know where, uh, why is that always, is that the cost of living in California has never been cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it. It's always just been a different, it's always just been a different decade of what the cost was at that time. So uh, when I did garbage, it was, 2001 to 2010, 2011. All right. So overall, has it been primarily working for them? So overall, has it so so your whole you know throughout your whole trucking career, has it been relatively smooth? And if not, what were some of the struggles you came along the way? Relatively smooth. That's a good question. Smooth in regards to doing the work or the people you have to work with or the fact that you're a female and a male predominantly done job. How about all of it? It's always been difficult to look at it that way. <laughs> Money was always pretty good because you're in the trucking industry. They know to pay for what you do. I think in the garbage world, it was definitely good because it's what they call uh, local, semi-local, meaning you're within the same state. If they have you driving, it's uh, 100 miles away to the next dump site that they have contracts with. Uh, most of the time, it's residential in three or four cities over that I would actually attend to. It was up in Sonoma County. So that was good. But being that my position there was private driver for the company's owner, you know, you got I got 100% on my salary, 100% on the coverages. I didn't pay a dime out. So, yeah, it was good. But All my right. sister also thought that they took advantage of me. But, you know, you get what you take for, you know. And moving on up from that, that's like I went back into um, busing after that. All right. So how did you, uh, so being, well, you said you was the only female driver uh, with with your company back then. But overall, back then, 
How did you handle when some of the drivers, you know, kind of sort of discouraged you? You know, I'm raised with three older brothers in a military family. It's like, you know, a lot of that stuff, I learned to have it roll off my neck. And I figured if you've got nothing better to do than to try and downplay somebody else, then you're just, uh, you're just self-centered in the first place. And I ain't got time for that. That's period. what's up. That's what's up. You know, my, my idea was to do my job and prove the fact wrong. You're always doing the job to prove that you can do it, to prove that you are able to do it because they're always going to look at you with that semi thing in the back of their head that, well, she's a woman. At some point she's going to fail. Even to the job I have currently this day, my boss who is a, is a male comes over and he has said to me, I love having you on this job because we prove them wrong every day. And I says, you know, I work at that every minute because I have to. Because not only am I driving, I'm running this. I'm running the operation, and I'm making the events happen. I'm getting out there and talking to people to schedule these. I don't have a staff working underneath me. I'm chief cook and bottle washer. So it's no different than if you owned your own truck and owned your own company. You've got to put 190% into it because 100 is not going to be good enough. Everybody's going to look at where you, they're trying to figure out where you fail. When I started this job I'm at now, they were taking bets at the university as to how long before this program crashed and burned because they had something similar to it back in 1997. And it didn't last more than, I think, a year. And then it did go down in flames. Mm. Not literally. But. So let me ask you this. So, you know, you're coming, you're coming up, you're coming up on that. You're fighting against that the entire time. Let me, let me ask you this. Now, let me ask, uh, ask you about, you know, how many miles, uh, 28 years man so throughout the 28 years do you do you count as many miles as you you got out here do you count the bus as well as the truck or do you just count the truck and how and if so how many miles you got combined and how many miles you got separated no oh, geez Personally, I've always just combined it because if you can do one, you can do the other. I know a lot of truckers will sometimes jump back down into busing. Right now, when the pandemic of COVID started, it was really busing just came to a screeching halt. And I've got a lot of friends out there on Facebook and Instagram that are still bus drivers to this day. And they were waiting out the whole scary period of when that can go back online. And I told them all, I said, you're all class B drivers. you find yourself a FedEx truck to drive. You'll find yourself uh, some delivery type of truck. You'll work for Amazon. You know, they're always looking for help. And I says, don't let yourself just sit stagnant. Don't let them win. Your license gives you more than just drive the bus. So, you know, I always, I got out of it. I just had years of doing busing and years of backseat driving and years of dealing with a bad company owner. That every time I left with a bus, especially one company, I was MacGyver. And everybody would look at my driver's compartment and say, hey, why do you have so much stuff? I said, have you seen who we work for? If you don't take this with you, you're going to be stuck and she's not going to send nobody to help you. So you better know how to fix it. So I grew up doing that. So it's like miles wise, uh, you know, since driving with my own bus and to this day, I, I got to say it's over a million. You can get a lot of that just doing a lot of repetitious stuff that's basically, you know, even if it's residential garbage pickup, right. in and out of there all day long for 14 hours. All right. TJ Jones, what's, you know. what's up? Um, what sets you apart from other drivers? What's TJ? I don't know if I set apart from other drivers. I think as drivers, we all are trying to do the same thing. We're trying to enjoy the the life, enjoy what it offers. I'm out there basically to help other people. I mean, as many things as I've driven, it's given me a lot of expertise in a lot of different things from, you know, private owned, you know, coach to take people to work in to entertainer coaches of $3 million to driving Kenworth's and 53 foot trailers to driving 
tour industry in San Francisco in a 1942 World War II duck that the soldiers rode on. A lot of this stuff just gives you a lot of knowledge and a lot of different aspects. So you're able to help others if they have a question. When I drove the entertainment coach, it was always a lot of people when they see me at the Prevo dealer, hey, what's going on with it now? What you doing? What's happening to it? And I would let them know because there's like 10 different intricate systems in that thing and you have to know how they work. So I'd be in there talking to the tech, making sure I understood this, gotten better with it. Okay. Just, you know, being more helpful to those out there on the road. I don't think it should be a lonely place for people. Now you We're all trying to do the same job and enjoy it. Now, you say you drove uh, entertainment. Who, who, who were some of the entertainers that, that, that you uh, drove for, you know, that did the touring? Anybody, anybody of an interest? Well, unlike most of the guys who will be on the bus with them for months on end on their tours when they're out doing concerts, for me, it would be a uh, small little move. Um, I've had uh, James Hetfield, the lead singer of Metallica. I had him on a limousine. Uh, Dana Carvey from Saturday Night Live. Uh, Joe Montana and his wife, because he has a house in Lafayette, so I took him home from the party. You know, different small things like that. Most of these guys that I know right now that are out there, that are friends of mine, they're driving people on tours for months. You know, they'll have Willie Nelson on board or they'll have, you know, and Lady Antebellum or whomever it may be. Okay, okay. Personally, I, I, my, see, my driving of entertainer coaches is that they're entertainer coaches that they're owned by CEOs. So I'm driving the CEOs of the company. Oh, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. If you had, uh, if you had, yeah, to, go, so, if, if you had to go back, uh, go back 28 years, uh, you know, into your dentistry and before you even got into the uh, into the trucking and you decided to start over, would you would have got into trucking? Yes. I think I probably would have started with that sooner than later. OK. What if uh, what if what if trucking wasn't the plan? You 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 what would have been your plan B? Plan B, more than I look back on it, would be probably entering the military, which I never thought of as well back then. But it was always right there. I mean, I had brothers and uncles and my dad that were military. I just never thought of it. Hmm, all right, Friends all right. that went into the military. All right. Bus driver D, everybody. I know that I know I, oh. I know that I know that I've driven some military stuff, but hey. That's what's up. Bus driver D, what's uh, you still? Of course, you still driving. You, you and your husband, y'all are y'all team driving, or y'all, uh, or y'all driving for separate companies. What's uh, what's your status, and and also, what is next for you guys after you know after you guys decide to hang up the keys? Uh, he's never been a commercial driver. Uh, he's been regional sales manager, operations manager for retail stores, Home Depot, Harbor Freight, Bed Bath & Beyond. Ran his own company with his dad when he was uh, in his early teens. Um, sales has pretty much been him. Right now, he's been, ever since he was a kid, he's done work on computers. So he's running websites right now. He builds websites. He's maintaining 160 of them. Uh, he works from home at the moment. I'm, I'm personally the only one that's ever driven for a living. Okay. Kids. You, you got kids? Uh, no, sorry. Uh -oh. We decided to raise my nieces and nephew and we are taking my mom on right now because she's widowed and, um, has diabetes and we've just, she's a cancer survivor for the last five years. So she's living with us. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, bus driver D, thank you very much for coming on and chopping it up with me. Uh, I wish I could stay thank a little. Bit, I wish I could stay a little bit longer, but I gotta get back on the road, y'all. I gotta make it up to Minnesota. That's where I'm gonna be playing cards. Oh, have a safe drive. I'm just saying. Yes, ma'am. I will. I will. What kind of advice or what kind of tips 
tips and advice for the younger jacks that's coming out here, the young female drivers that's curious to get out here. What tips? What tips you got for them? I tell them to stay vigilant, keep a keep a really good eye on how to take care of themselves while they're out there, and be vigilant about their surroundings and how they can do their job and be better at it. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And, and don't let anybody, whether male or female, put you down on what you do. There's no shame in the game. Absolutely not. That is what's... And being, uh, being, a concealed carry, being a concealed carry owner, I highly recommend most women do the same thing. Okay. You can do. That's what's up. That's what's up. Bus driver D, y'all. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with your boy, you can do that. Hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutManPodcast at gmail.com. Yo, truck, I mean, uh, bus driver D, you, you think you guys, you, you, you think you want to come on for a follow up because there, there's more, you know, there's, there's more that we haven't even touched on, right? Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Anytime. That's, that's what's up. That's what's up. So I will be setting that back up with you. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. If you guys like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. So when, you, when I come on, I can do that. Thank you to the LOM community for being here. Wise Isle, TJ Jones, J Most for the Super Chat and the Cash app. Yo, if you want to hook a brother up with some coffee, man, you can do that dollar sign lockout men yo I, I do it for you guys that's what's up uh and on that note i got somebody to play me out so while they doing that again thank you from the bottom of my heart without you guys it would not be me thank you to my special guest bus driver d for being here and until then until next time i will get with you guys <laughs> later peace Alrighty. Whoops. There we go.